Welcome to the car, guys, and behind me is the gargantuan shape of the Toyota Land Cruiser. Amazon, the imperious seven-seater Toyota 4x4, and my favorite 90s off-road beast. I've always loved the J100 Land Cruiser, and this is a particularly fine 1999 example that belongs to our good friend, Nick. And when he offered me the chance to spend a day with his restored pride and joy, I was down here like a stabbed rat. Just look at those chunky, robust proportions, the sheer girth of it, the feeling that it could drive up the face of a volcano with ease. And like the Terminator, it would never, ever stop. So this week, I'm going to tell you the story of this magnificent vehicle, the design, its interior, the quirky features, mechanicals, its history, and of course, what makes it special. And I'm going to experience threading the Amazon through the leafy roads of Surrey. If that sounds like your special kind of unstoppable off-road vodka, Let's get on with it. I cannot tell you how excited I am to be driving a late 90s Japanese 4x4. And yes, I know that sounds very strange, but here on The Car Guys, I only really review the cars that I'm actually interested in or that I could see myself owning. And this ticks both those boxes. And that is why you can be sure of eclectic and unpredictable content on this channel, which hopefully you will appreciate. And they don't get more eclectic or unpredictable than the Land Cruiser Amazon. The J100 series Toyota Land Cruiser Amazon VX was first shown in October 1997 at the Tokyo Motor Show, and it went on sale in January 1998, lasting until 2007. It followed a distinguished and highly successful line of J series Land Cruisers that stretched all the way back to 1951. The Toyota Land Cruiser, world's toughest four-wheel drive. There's no stopping a Toyota. It's the toughest, guttiest, keep going as power package ever built into a four wheel drive. The new Land Cruiser was more spacious, more technically advanced, had seven seats, an electric sunroof, memory seats, active suspension, permanent four wheel drive, a low ratio gearbox and locking differentials to cope with all that demanding off road action. The Amazon VX also featured a brand new 4.7 litre V8 petrol engine, as well as the bomb proof workhorse of a 4.2 turbo diesel. But most importantly, it looked good on the drives of the country set and its reliability and improved interior quality meant that in every market that mattered, it further decimated the sales of Land Rover and Range Rover. The Amazon came in six standard colors, Arctic white, astral black, silver pearl, stellar blue, claret, and ash down green, which is what this car is clearly in. Toyota also had the smaller J90 Colorado seen here, but for me, it's always been about the biggest model in the range, and they don't get much bigger than the Amazon. Do I need all that space? No, but do I want it? Oh yes. Apart from the Amazon VX, which you see here, Toyota also offered a GX model, which was diesel only, and was kind of a poverty spec. So the less said about that, the better. Back in the late 90s, the Land Cruiser's main rivals were the heavyweights of the SUV world, the Range Rover, Nissan Patrol, and Mercedes G-Wagon. And given that the Range Rover was a bit chintzy and fragile back then, personally, I would have gone squarely for the Land Cruiser. And don't forget, this was the SUV choice for a certain Mr. Clarkson, allowing him to traverse the Cotswolds green lanes on the school run. And here's something you probably didn't know. For the 70th anniversary of the Land Cruiser, Toyota launched this, a modern retro tribute 70 series. All the incredible retro design, but with modern underpinnings. This is right up my street, and I sort of kind of wish it was released over here, but it wasn't. But don't worry, dear viewer, because Toyota has just announced the brand new Land Cruiser with a healthy dose of nostalgia and a new Land Rover Defender-esque looky-likey design. Here it is. It was actually a complete surprise that Toyota unveiled this new car, but I have to say it's good to see the old girl back. So then, I know you've all been gagging for a quick walk around the Toyota Land Cruiser Amazon, and I'm here to oblige you, ladies and gentlemen. Now, first thing you notice, it's huge. It's enormous. I love the height of it. I love how 
enormous it feels when you're standing next to it. It's almost a struggle to see into the engine bay. Huge headlights giving you lots of light at night. You've also got these classic remnants of the 80s and 90s, which is windscreen washers, not integrated at all, just bolted straight into the bumper and firing gallons of soapy water at that colossal amount of glass. I love it. There's nothing in the Amazon that isn't super sized. Now a few other details to highlight. You'll notice it's kind of two-tone colour. You've got the green of the paint but then the bumpers and under sections are all in this sort of dark grey colour which really looks fantastic particularly in this country setting. You've also got these prominent step plates here which allows you to get up into the car. Very useful indeed even when the ride height is at its lowest setting. This step plate also allows you to get up on top so you can see the roof rack and you can put stuff up there. So just imagine what it's like when it's fully loaded this thing and pulling a big trailer. Proper workhorse this is. There's a beautiful little sculptured vent here at the back, which I assume is for ventilation, but you can also open these rear windows as well for the passengers in the back. Of course, it's a seven seater, two, three, two formation and then you can fold away the seats in the back to make a huge luggage space. And a Land Cruiser signature design is the bulging wheel arches. That's something you can see on the very latest car and you can see it right through the heritage of the Land Cruiser. Big chunky off-road tyres obviously for something like this. This car feels absolutely impregnable. It feels like you could drive it through a war zone and come away completely unscathed. At the business end of the Land Cruiser you've of course got an opening tailgate which allows you to obviously put shopping straight in here but if you need a little bit more space or if you need the dogs to jump up or just generally get more access you can then also drop the tailgate and it's one of those ones that's good enough to carry two full-sized adults. Another important thing to say, it has a full-size spare tyre underneath the car itself. Quite unusual these days, but back in the olden days, you did used to have a full wheel. You didn't have to try and squirt some foam in there or just call a recovery service. You could actually change the tyre yourself and get moving. Nick's Amazon is the VX, and that means, of course, he's got the all-new, at the time, 4.7-litre V8 petrol engine the one to have. A rampaging rhinoceros of a power plant generating 232 brake horsepower and 320 foot-pounds of torque. And all of that via a four-speed electronically controlled automatic gearbox. And that's good enough to shift the Amazon's 2.4 tonne girth from 0 to 60 in 10.7 seconds and give a top speed of 109 miles an hour. Now I know what you're thinking, Damien, what on earth are you smoking? Those performance figures are terrible. A modern Urus or even a Volvo XC90 would have this for dead. And yes, dear viewer, you are of course right. But fortunately for the Land Cruiser, owners in period were not interested in the slightest in outright performance, and instead they needed something that would never break down, never leave them stranded up a mountain or a sand dune or in the outback. And that's something the Amazon does very well. Another thing it does very well is tow a ton more than its own weight. Because of course you have to remember Toyota Land Cruiser Amazons are workhorses. They are proper workers. They are the mules of the road, but also packed with luxury. Oh, big old thunk. I love it. I love a Land Cruiser and I love the interior of a Land Cruiser. It's like the exterior, it's very chunky. Unlike many SUVs and 4x4s, which were basic, utilitarian and designed to wash mud and blood out of the cabin, the Amazon boasts a luxurious cabin designed to cosset and relax its occupants. It was the first real attempt to outdo the Range Rover, and so you've got leather interior, electric everything, including a sunroof, air conditioning, soundproofing and wood trim. Even today, the Amazon VX is a class act. But of course it's the sheer amount of space in here that really impresses. So let me show you all the features of this interior. First of all, everything in here is beige leather. It's very well upholstered, it's very well made, but it does have that 90s DFS carpet warehouse feel to it. The Japanese, unfortunately back then, were the master of a certain type of plastic. Most of it in hearing aid beige, and you find it in all Hondas and Toyotas of the period. What I love about sitting in the cockpit of an Amazon is how imposing it feels. We're very high up. I've got a 
extraordinary view of the road ahead. Perfect visibility, loads of glass everywhere. Big old steering wheel in front of me, proper analog dials. So I've got the uh, battery indicator, so the battery health, the fuel tank, the speedo rev counter, and two temperature gauges over on the right hand side. Plus, of course, I've got the indicator to show you what gear you're in and plenty of warning lights should you need them. We've got proper big, thick, very familiar Toyota switch gear. If you've ever had an MR2, then you'll recognize these switches instantly. Because it's a Japanese car, obviously the lights are on the left-hand side and windscreen washers are on the right. The Amazon VX had cruise control, so you've got controls for that as well. We've got many switches, proper manual switches, no touch screens. This is the analog era, so everything has a good old chunky button that is easy to spot and easy to reach. What on earth has gone wrong with modern cars where now all of this is hidden inside a submenu of an impenetrable smeary touchscreen? Instead, what I've got is an enormous center console dominated, obviously, by the automatic transmission control and the gear ratio controller. You've also got two chunky buttons down here. This is for the heated seats. Just imagine the energy that's put through those to heat these colossal, luxurious, beautiful leather armchairs. We've also got a standard handbrake. And over here, we've got controls for the manual ride height. So you can select that. You've got a comfort and sport setting. You can also do it yourself. We've got a non-standard radio, which is one of the only things that isn't stock about this car. And you've got a big old climate control section with big chunky knobs and switches. One here for the temperature, then you've got where you're gonna send the air and at what ferocity. You've also got the control for locking the differential. And of course, you've got that highly polished walnutty cherry type wood, which is de rigueur in Japanese cars of the 90s and 2000s. Under this flap, you've got two cup holders with nice little carpet inlays so that your cups are nicely gently carried. You have a little ashtray there. You've got a power point, a 12 volt power point and a cigarette lighter. In this center console, it's a secret center console because in the top section, you've got your knickknack drawer. And then in the secret compartment below that, you've then got another drawer and also the six CD auto changer. To my right, I've got another piece of wood with all the window controls and you've got the memory seats here because of course memory seats electronically adjusted were a real selling point of cars in the late 90s. Quite a small glove box I would like to highlight in such a big car, but just enough to put your manual in. I love the fact that there's grab handles for all the passengers, somewhat highlighting the fact that maybe it could be a bit of a choppy ride. This car's got floor mats all over the top dashboard to prevent cracking and fading and generally keep it in pristine condition. You see, I told you it was a well-loved example. Overall then it's a luxurious but very functional cockpit, something that you don't for a minute think will ever break in any way, will always look good no matter how many years or miles the car does. It's a real timeless experience and as soon as you get into a car like this, mm, the smell of the leather, it's just so evocative of all those classic Lexus and Hondas and Toyotas of the period. You'll also notice that there's a period holder here for one of those old mobile phones. And if you look on the outside of the car, you can actually see a Vodafone aerial that's been stuck on because at some point in its life, this was a company director's company car. Ah, oh, there you go. Full electric sunroof, obviously it's a real selling point of the car and it does lighten up the cabin significantly. And probably I should have recorded the majority of this with the sunroof open, but unfortunately I'm an idiot. And it's a similar story in the back actually. Lots of room, leg room is extraordinary. These seats, if anything, are more soft and luxurious than the front. You've got this big armrest right here, as well as uh, teddy bear. You've also got cargo nets on the back there for your in-flight magazines. And here's where you can activate your own private climate control. Oh, look at that. How about that for a cup holder? Nice action, my friends. But you've got a fantastic view all around the car. You're actually slightly higher up in these rear seats than the passenger and the driver. And that gives you a particular safari feel. You really get a commanding view out of the windscreen. You don't feel tucked in or claustrophobic at all. And uh, this is a perfect car for driving around Kenya looking for big game. I have to say this 
is a really, really nice place to be. I'm loving it. Now let's check out the last two seats in the back. One thing I do love about the interior of these Land Cruisers is the number of little cubby holes. Look, there's another one there. There's something here. Oh, a little cup holder, lovely. <laughs> it's something there, look, ashtray, and another even larger one over there. You are never short of space in a Land Cruiser. Oh, look at that. As you can see, the seats can fold down. You can then fold and move the rear seats as well. So you can have an extraordinary amount of luggage space. And in the last two seats in the boot, yeah, it's not quite as luxurious an experience. Uh, you've still got a decent amount of leg room. You've still got quite a good viewing position, mainly thanks to these enormous bits of glass here, which you can pop out and open so you can get some ventilation. But it's uh, starting to get a bit snug. My head is much closer to the roof. I feel about a hundred miles from the driver and there's uh, not a lot of rear impact space. But uh, the fact that you can carry seven people, I mean, that was a revelation back in the 90s and uh, it's still very useful today. Even now, those huge SUVs rarely are seven seaters. Part of the reason for the Amazon being so capacious inside is that it is a flipping massive outside. There's no getting away from these super tanker-esque proportions and height, and it makes it an imposing car to drive on the roads, even today. And if you want to know what it's like to reverse park the Vatican, try one of these. As you can see, the Amazon is nearly five meters long, two meters wide, and a smidge under two meters tall. Here it is, compared to some famous landmarks so that you can judge its real world scale. The exterior is chunky, squared off, and rugged, just like 4x4s should be. The trouble with modern metal is that they all look like refrigerators that have been tipped onto their sides, whereas this has a sort of sturdy elegance that seems to say, I got you, bro. I like the fact that even though this is nearly 70 years on from the original Land Cruiser, it still shares many of the design cues. That broad bonnet and imposing grille, for example. You've got independent front double wishbone suspension and a rigid axle at the rear with four link trailing arms and coil springs. And this has the hydro pneumatic active height control as well, allowing you to manually change the ride height. The Amazon V8 petrol quite rightly weighs 2.4 tons, which let's face it, is a lot. And that's part of the reason why it feels so solid and composed on the road. Special attention was paid to the brakes for this model. Four piston ventilated discs which have been designed to stop the Amazon quickly and smoothly. To allow this to happen, the brake master cylinder features a hydraulic brake booster for improved pedal feel and reduced pedal effort. Combine that with ABS and electronic brake distribution and you've got one safe SUV. Here we go then, into drive and we're off. I should highlight actually, we're here at East Hampstead Park, who have very kindly allowed me to film in their grounds, and it is a very lovely, luxurious hotel. So if you are in the Bracknell area, please check them out. First thing to notice, the ride quality really is quite good. There's obviously some squeaks and rattles, because it is an older car. Now I do feel high up and very imperious. Yeah, it's a commanding driving position. It does feel enormous on UK roads, but actually in terms of body roll, it stays quite flat, but what you feel is the car almost moving on its tyres because they're so thick, but the car itself stays perfectly flat. I'm a big sucker for a huge chunky gear stick, and this one is exactly what you want. It feels like you're commanding a starship. I love it. The wheel is huge. Everything about this car is huge, but it is glorious, frankly. It rides almost exactly how I expected it to. I haven't driven a Nissan Patrol or an old G-Wagon, but I have driven a Mitsubishi Shogun, and it's that kind of big 4x4 feel. The seats, the interior, it's a very comfortable place to be, and in this lovely, almost British racing green colour, yeah, I know I look good. Of course, this is the V8 petrol, and that will give you approximately 17 miles to the gallon. So it's not brilliant, but who cares about that when you're driving something as stylish and as retro cool as this? I would rather have this 
than any of the contemporary rivals and to be honest I'd rather have this than most modern cars as well. I've got loads of glass, I've got perfect visibility, I'm up high, it feels like everything in the world is someone else's problem. Obviously I am driving this absolute perfect condition car thanks to Nick and you won't be surprised to hear that I am not going to be taking it down some green lanes or up a mountain. I'm going to treat this car with respect and I'm just going to enjoy the experience of driving it. I'm not here to try and test it up Kilimanjaro. Bracknell is perfectly fine today. <laughs> the soundproofing which Toyota made a big thing of, it really works. It's very quiet in here. It's almost Rolls-Royce-esque quiet which I think enhances that whole luxury feel. It's refined, it's smooth. Honestly, these sort of cars, they're a bit creaky, of course, and they're a touch agricultural, but that's all part of its charm. It's the feeling that you could go absolutely anywhere in the world and this would get you there. Doesn't matter the conditions, doesn't matter the weather, what's happening on the ground, this will get you there. It's fantastic. It's no wonder there was such an enormous seller in Australia where you needed that ability to get anywhere, but also be extremely reliable. This car's done 124,000 miles and it will do another 124,000 miles and then another 124 and another and another. This thing will outlive humankind. When the rest of the world has been consumed by dust, there'll be a Land Cruiser Amazon still around. I know you can have the smaller Colorado, but for me, it's got to be about the big one it's got to be the amazon the range topping vehicle is always the one that excites me the most it's been the same with bmw it's the same with mercedes same with rolls royce i just i just love these big cars i don't mind the acres of beige i don't mind the fact that it's all analog i don't mind the fact that it's outclassed in terms of performance by pretty much everything else on the road i'm having a great time this is just a go anywhere fun tonka toy fun is in short supply in the world at the moment and the Land Cruiser gives you it in spades. If it wasn't for the fact that Nick would probably stick a bayonet in my neck if I didn't bring it back in about half an hour, I think I would just keep going. I think I would just drive this car to the ends of the earth. Oh and the brakes, remember what I said about the brakes? Really good. This is a heavy vehicle, those brakes gave me complete confidence then there was no problem whatsoever. It's so important to have good brakes on something like this because you could be carrying an awful lot of weight, especially if you were seven up and with luggage and you're barreling down an auto route, you want the sort of braking system that this car has got. I can absolutely see why Nick loves this car. I can absolutely see why he's obsessed with it. And I think if you can find a good one, and bear in mind, these are not expensive vehicles, but to find a good one, with low-ish miles in good condition, one that hasn't rusted. Yeah, if you can, buy it. Buy it immediately. Oh, look at that. There we go. But you see, so I'm moving, the steering wheel's moving, but the body is staying completely flat. And now, even though it is stupid and not relevant in any way, I feel like you, the Car Guys viewers, and Nick, actually, it would be remiss if I didn't give this enormous vehicle, the beans. Let's see what happens, here we go, ready? We're in uh, automatic, let's go, ready? Whoa. Now, you get a great noise out of this. You don't get an enormous amount of speed, but you get a great surging noise from that V8 petrol engine. This, it's not the fastest thing in the world, of course it isn't, but, you don't really need it to be. In fact, doing beans in a vehicle like this seems wholly inappropriate, so that was just for scientific reasons. And probably what it also did, which I particularly like, is it really pissed off the eco-activists. Certainly any eco-protesters out there, you're not gonna stop this oil, that's for sure. But through the bends, it's surprisingly nimble and a lot of fun. And I'm not getting that weird twisting 
sensation that you get with a lot of big vehicles. I think because the chassis is such strong steel. So in conclusion, what do I like about the Land Cruiser Amazon? Well, I love the chunky looks. I love the retro styling. I like the fact that everything's analog. I like the fact that everything's got a button and not a touch screen. I love how comfortable it is, the luxurious seats. I love the middle seating position in particular, that safari seating. I love the how practical it is, how much you can get in it. If you fold away those two seats at the back, you've got an enormous boot. I love the split tailgate. I love the sound deadening. I love the composure. I love the fact that it stays flat and it doesn't lean and feel like it's going to topple over at all. And I love the sound of the V8 petrol engine and those brakes are sensational. What do I not like about it? Well, I don't like the fact that obviously they rust and therefore you're going to get that sorted. I don't like the fact that some of that bodywork and bumper work scratches particularly easy and therefore you do have to replace that very often. The fuel economy is a little bit pants, and obviously because it's a 90s Japanese car, the interior is of course a that beige, which isn't particularly attractive, I think I'll probably go for black leather if I could, and obviously it's getting on a little bit, so it's a bit creaky in here. But apart from those minor niggles, I am a huge fan of this car. I suspected I would like it, I like the range topper, I like big vehicles, and this just puts a smile on my face all the time. It's like driving a big old fun JCB. It's like if someone's doing some work and you've got a digger for the weekend and the workmen go away and leave the keys in, you get to play with the digger all weekend. It's just that level of fun. Thank you for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it interesting and entertaining and I hope you like this as much as I do. If you like what we're doing on the car guys, please subscribe, leave comments and likes. There'll be another episode next week.